Hey there, everyone. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to partition your internal rate of return of a real estate investment in Excel. Now, this is not a video on what partitioning the IRR is. Uh, I'll link to some resources where you can study the concept more in depth. But this is a video around the mechanics of how to do it in Excel. Now, you might want to partition the IRR if you, if you have a certain investment uh, thesis that uh, hopes for, say, uh, more returns from income than from appreciation, for instance. And so partitioning of the IRR will allow you to compare two investments side by side and see that investment A, for instance, provides more return from income throughout the term than investment B and so forth. And so let's get into how to do this in Excel. Here we have a basic setup. Uh, and so when, you're, when you are taking your model, you're going to need to have uh, your, uh, your income stream, uh, your net cash flow stream, separated from your proceeds from sales stream, uh, and then any other cash flow stream. So you may uh, be modeling out uh, uh, the advantages of depreciation, for instance, the tax advantages of, of depreciation, and that would be an additional um, uh, income stream to you, perhaps. But in this case, we're going really simple. Uh, I have one line, which is dollars invested. And uh, we're assuming that we purchased an asset for $50,000 in time zero. And then we have a next line, our cash flow from operations, net income, whatever you want to call it, uh, net operating income if you are, if you are uh, modeling your capex above uh, NOI. And that is this stream here. And, and that's essentially the cash that your property is throwing off every year or in every period. And then finally, we have the sale proceeds. And we're assuming at the end of a 10-year or 10-period term, uh, we're going to sell the property for twice the amount of what we paid for it, 100000 in in period 10. And the sum of these cash flows, 50000 out of our pocket in time zero, and then we're getting these amounts into our pocket each year. And then, of course, year 10 is a much larger amount because we're selling the property. And that gives us an IRR of 15.8% and an equity multiple of 3.15 times. Now, we're going to partition out the IRR. I'm also going to show you a, uh, a how I partition, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's the proper term. Um, it's not an ac academics, but it's, not, it's an exercise that I do where I partition out the equity multiple as well. Uh, and that gives me a, just a different look at how the cash flow stream. This is a, a non-time value of money look at how the cash flows are coming in. So let's get started. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to drop in here all of my cash flow from operations uh, on an exactly how they're shown. So I just simply link up to here. And a quick way to do that, I'm going to use an offset formula. Reference this, F4, arrows, comms. OK, and then I'll just drop in. And there we have. You can link it manually. I use an offset formula because uh, it saves me a little bit of time. But essentially, I'm linking this stream to this column, right? Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what is the present value of each one of these cash flow streams based on a given discount rate. And what's the discount rate? It's going to be the IRR. And the idea being we're going to discount each one of these cash flows back to our original value or the original amount that we paid for the property. So um, just to show you, this is a simple PV formula equals present value, open parentheses. Our rate is the internal rate of return. The period, the N per, is the year or the period that we're in. And let me lock in the column so that I can copy this over. And then there is no payment, but my future value is this value right there. I hit Enter. One nuance to this is I need to make this negative so that these are, that's a positive present value. And then we're just going to copy this down. Next, we're going to sum alt equal sign. That's going to sum up that column. Alt equal sign is going to sum up that column. And now we have the present value of 
this cash flow stream throughout the term. That's 26,000. So I can already see that this, the, the IRR, or the proportion of this IRR, more than 50% of it is coming from my cash flow stream because this is more than 50% of the amount that we initially invest in. Next, I'm going to do the exact same exercise, but for my sale proceeds. Now, I'm going to use the offset formula again, only because there may be cases where you're selling a portion of the property throughout the term. Or, for instance, if you're selling condos or you're selling uh, lots, etc., you're going to see sale proceeds throughout. And in fact, uh, you, you'd see very little income. Uh, well, this just depends on the investment. But I'm going to link this up. So I'm going to copy over my offset formula. I'm going to make sure that it's set to oops, that row there. And I'm going to copy down that. And essentially what I'm doing, and you can choose how, whatever method you want to drop in this cash flow stream into this column. Okay, And then again, I'm going to sum that up. And then I'm going to do, use this present value formula. So let's just copy this one over. Actually, I can use a, a straight copy. So I'm just going to copy that straight over. And now what we're doing is we're taking the present value of this cash flow, which in period one is zero. Uh, we're going to uh, discount it back from time one to time zero at this discount rate. And that's the formula to do it, right? And then we're just going to copy this down. And what we're going to get here is this is the present value of this future cash flow of 100,000. And when we sum those up, we get 23,000. And watch what happens. This plus this is going to equal that. Well, let me just do this first so you can show you. We're going to do a total. This plus this. So this is without time value of money. Copy that down. Sum it up. This is the sum. And then the present value again is this formula here. And another way you can do it is you can simply sum that up to show you you can see that's that it works okay and uh, let me clean that up so there we have the present value of these cash flows discounted back at the internal rate of return is going to give us the initial investment okay and so then we want to know so we've now partitioned out the IRR to see that and this is the last step you're going to take uh, the present value of your income stream and you're going to divide that by the total 54 percent we're going to copy that formula over here so we're doing the same thing that divided by that and we can see that 54 percent of this IRR is coming from income 46 percent is coming from our sale at the end and so if we're an if we're an investor that prefers income over appreciation this investment might do that for us, right? Uh, even more so, let's imagine that there was less appreciation and this our sale was only 75000 We get even more of our IRR or a proportionate share of our, of our IRR from income versus sale. Let me undo that with a control Z. The next thing I'm going to do just real quick is I'm going to look at what proportion of income versus sale proceeds uh, uh, are affecting our equity multiple. And so this is really simple. I'm just going to take uh, on a non-time value of money basis my income stream. I'm going to do the same for my sales. And then I'm going to sum these up. Again, alt equals sums that column. Alt equals sums that column. Sum it up there. And take that up like so. So I get a total. And then again, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to find out what proportion of this total amount uh, is income. So I just do this divided by this, 36%. Uh, and this one here is 63.6%. And so what, what this tells us here is if we're only looking at our returns from an equity multiple uh, uh, basis, we're going to assume that the majority of our returns are coming from the sale. And that's because we aren't taking into account time value of money. When we look at it from an IRR perspective, there's a larger proportion of our, uh, of our returns that are actually coming from 
the internal, or I'm sorry, from income. And so that's how you build, or that's how you how you partition the IRR in Excel of a real estate investment. Uh, let me just for fun to finish the last minute here. Let me show you how this can change. So let's imagine that you have an investment that rather than you buy immediately have a cash flow stream. Let's say you buy and then in the first couple years you don't have any income. So let's say the first three years you don't have income for whatever reason. Year four you start out, now you have 5,000 of income starting in year four and that just grows it at a healthy 3% through the end of the term and then you sell it for that 100,000 that we discussed. Look at the difference now in your IRR. Uh, it's a similar thing on the equity multiple. I mean, it's a little steeper for your sale, but it's it's nowhere near as drastic, as drastic of a change in the partition of your IRR, where because you don't have cash flow just in those first three years, a two-thirds majority of your returns are coming from the reversion or the sale versus only one-third coming from your income. And so that gives you now a feel. You might now be a, an investor who cares about appreciation. Uh, and let's imagine that this is even a s bigger pop. And uh, you get a you know, similar IRR from the, the previous example, but a much larger proportion of that IR, IRR is coming on a speculative basis from a sale at the end of the term. And, and so uh, this is a great tool to use. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to email. And I appreciate your time.